Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Making Midgar. I am this old gamer. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you along for the ride today as we are all set for episode two of this series. Finally came up with a title, Making Midgard, because that is the name of this amusement park. Midgar, a fictional city in Final Fantasy VII that I am recreating, so to speak. So today we are creating a go-kart track, which this is ultimately going to be the beginning of the slums area. So this is going to be an episode that kind of leads into the next couple of episodes, serves as kind of a base to the episodes coming up. The slums is an area in Final Fantasy VII that is not that great. Everything that is below the giant plates of the Midgard reactors and owned by Shinra, everything below that is a very, very bad area. Ran down, underutilized, things of that nature. And everything above it is Euphoria, very nice and lovely, but not too many people get to go up there. None at all. So we are recreating the beginning of the slums. And this is kind of like the opening scene of Final Fantasy VII. There's a train that is roaring down the tracks. And a very famous scene in the history of video games, if I may be so bold. And that's kind of what we are recreating here at the beginning. Now, when you are making stuff in Planet Coaster, if you just if you don't find what you're looking for, you can actually go right on to the Steam Workshop in-game. Look for it, subscribe to it, and it's just in the game. Unlike City Skylines, where you have to exit the program and a lot of things can happen along the way, that does not happen in Planet Coaster. You can just hop right into the Steam Workshop from the game, subscribe to as many things as you'd like, and then you can just hop right back onto your map. So I have this locomotive. I found this little oil tanker uh, carrier thing, and we are just kind of recreating this train scene. I'm using the in-game subway looking uh, props here. And we're actually going to place this one right in behind this oil tanker. This train serves as the very, very beginning of the game. Like I said, our characters kind of run down this road here beside the train and enter into the first action scenes of the game. I'm kind of repaint, repainting these subway cars a darker color to kind of match the rest of this train. And um, yeah, so that is what we're getting started on right now. So this go-kart track, my idea was I wanted to create a go-kart track that was somewhat uh, went through these scenes and kind of floated around uh, in the area around this train. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to put down some little staircases so people have a way to get up to this fictional track. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start building some huge factory looking things. So I want to continue to build things around this center portion of Midgar um, and just kind of make it look industrial as possible. So we're just kind of going down the back side of this train. And on episode one, I talked a lot about Planet Coaster feeling like a Lego set. This is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, you can just build walls, build anything you want, and it just works. Works really well, which is uh, awesome. Quite the achievement for this game. Very easy, can be time consuming. As you can tell, I think, um, I have sped up this quite a bit. I didn't really intend on doing a lot of speed building when I started doing this series, but there's really no way to fit all this stuff into one episode without doing that. So I apologize if you're not a speed build fan, but here we are. Uh, if you watch my channel, you probably are used to me fast forwarding through things uh, quite a bit. And I also did not include every little level of detail um, that I made around these buildings and stuff. I'm just trying to get you to see the gist of it. These long rectangle buildings kind of just serving as gigantic um, factory type things. And they're all kind of leading to the center of the map. Again, you know, we are focusing on recreating Midgar, but at the same time, I'm not going to do it bit by bit. It's just a little bit too much to do, but we're creating some of the highlights of the map 
and I'm really excited about the beginning of the slums that we're doing here today. Now there are lots of props and stuff built into the game that you can use, some of which you have to kind of like do your own thing with, so you'll have the base to something that you're wanting to do, but it doesn't necessarily always pan out exactly how you want, so you have to kind of um, use them in different ways. So these, these are actually pipes that you connect that I'm using as smokestacks in that case. Here's some different pipes, but these are pipes that are part of the actual building. So when I'm adding these to the building, there's an option there on the right, uh, in the bottom right corner, that says add to building. That makes them officially part of this building. Now what that does is, that means that if you save this as a blueprint, you're going to have all those pipes and all the details. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. So like the little Shinra sign on the side, if I want to make that just only on this building, I can do that. I can take items off and add items to the building at will. But as you can see, I added some little lights on the side and some other little details along the way. Smoke coming out of the smokestacks now. And I'm taking the track side and I actually eliminated the track. So it just kind of served as a platform up a little bit higher. And here I'm going to put in some like little openings and those openings will serve a purpose at a later date, I was thinking this would be a good place to maybe put some shops or something like that, um, some concessions or things of that nature. Now we have our second building and I'm actually gonna take out these bottom pieces. I've already taken out the bottom pieces on the other side on the original factory. That's the area we are going to be using for our go-kart track and here we are. Setting up a go-kart track is pretty simple. This is the same functionality that works on roller coasters and stuff that we'll do later in this series. But today we're keeping it, starting off with something a little bit simple. Now it's not always perfect uh, and you have to do a lot of back and forth of switching angles and things like that. I'm actually wanting this track to kind of curve a tad bit in the building, just like that. So I can put some little props and stuff along the side of the track. Go-kart tracks, you have to kind of keep them pretty tame. If you have too many large angles or if you start to increase your hill like I'm doing here and you go too high, you can see that track turning red. That's just basically saying you can't do that. It's not going to work. Another thing that doesn't work is you cannot run this go-kart track over the road. I'm going to slow down the video just a tad here. As you can see, it is not allowing me to do that. So I kind of like curve this around just a little bit here, do some adjustments, actually curve it a little bit harder than I wanted to originally. But you can't put that over the uh, go-kart track. Now what you can do, or I should say the path, you can't put the go-kart track over the path. But what you can do is you can put the path under the go-kart track. It just has to be a little bit elevated for that to work. And you can also run the track underneath the track itself. It does that. It just doesn't like doing it over a path for whatever reason. And then, boom, we connected it. So, very simple, right? Nothing much to that. Now we're going to create the line queue. We will be adding to the track and giving it a lot of character here momentarily. But first, we're going to add to this line queue. I actually brought this line queue all the way over. I want it to run parallel with the building. I know this is odd to have an elevated line queue, but there's gonna be lots of cool things to look at. And soon we're gonna be adding a little drop tower here in the middle of all this stuff. And we're gonna get to that drop tower on a later episode. We might do something fun with it. But for today, I'm just going to throw it in there. It's going to be what this line queue is kind of circling so people can watch people do the drop tower uh, while they're waiting in line. Scenery is a big deal, so if you have an interesting, um, if you have interesting things to look at for the people in line, then they won't be bored and they'll like the ride better, generally speaking. So we'll take a look at that and see what we ended up at with our percentages. Uh, last time I checked, it was in the lower 70s. So we already have uh, quite a bit of things for them to look at, but uh, we want we want more. So there's the drop tower you see. It's a gigantic monstrosity. I guess very similar to the Tower of Terror at Disney. Uh, just kind of a free fall drop. But that is our free fall drop. And I thought it kind of tied in really well with the industrial looking stuff. It's kind of all 
you know, not that great looking. Uh, kind of ran down. We're actually taking the pipes from the outside of the building and we're kind of running them inside so we can kind of create some cool effects on the inside. Working on the inside of buildings is a little bit tougher. You'll notice that the your mouse and, and the view and the camera just kind of hops around all over the place at times. But it's simple enough to use. Uh, you, and any shortcuts you can find uh, always are good on city building games and games that you do this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not going to a humongous length of, uh, length of uh, detail on the inside. I'm just putting a bunch of different pipes, like I said, pulling them from, hey, there they go. Uh, pulling them from the outside and then just adding some little special effects. Now, the special effects like this lightning, for example, uh, any of the smoke and all that, you can actually put all that stuff on triggers. So when the go-kart goes over that trigger, it would do a particular um, action, like shoot out the lightning or whatever. I did not do that on this. I will probably save stuff like that until we work on our first coaster or something along those lines. This is kind of thought to be a little bit just random, so that's kind of what I went with uh, on this particular part of the go-kart track. Here I'm just kind of connecting this and you'll notice there's a lot of details kind of showing up. I did the line cue for the drop tower. I just wanted to kind of get that in place. We will circle back to that, like I said, at a later episode. And I also am putting in this little chain link fence. I'm wanting to remember to do little things like this because it just adds to the realism. And that's what I'm going for. I really want a realistic looking park, although this is based on a world that's not real. I want it to be very real looking uh, the best I can. So so I haven't talked anything about terraforming. Uh, terraforming. Oh. Followed me from City Skylines. How dare you. Oh, boy. I thought I got rid of that. I'm sorry. So terraforming is way easier on Planet Coaster than City Skylines without question. Very simple. Um, as you can see, I just made that whole pretty easily it looks a little funny but we're going to use our smooth tool here in a second but basically the buttons you see there you just have a pull and a push you just can terraform at will and it's super easy you can adjust the strength that it goes uh, the quicker it pulls or the harder it pulls and all that kind of stuff you can make gigantic you can make really funny looking rock combinations if you want to which i probably will a little bit later since this is a fantasy based park I'll have some uh, some funny looking stuff uh, to do with uh, rock formations and things of that nature. I'm using these swamp trees just because I thought they look kind of cool around this little pond I got. Um, and then here we have the surface painter which is built into the game. Again, everything here you're seeing is just 100% built in or it's built uh, with the tools in the game. So I'm just using the asphalt spray here. And just giving this whole thing more of a city look. I didn't want it at all to be grass uh, since we're in the middle of a, a downtown or a, a city area. So here we have our go-kart track all rip-roaring and ready to go. Look out for that accident on turn five. So as you can see, I added a lot of details around this. I have a pipe running from the factory all the way over to my... Mako Energy, which is the Earth's energy that Shinra is sucking. They make energy drinks, too, right in that building back there. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll continue building Midgar one area at a time, but this is the beginning of the slums. I'm really excited about the next couple of steps in this process, and we will see you next time. I'm going to leave you with some really cool night scenes and a go-kart race. Bye-bye.